Welcome to another podcast from Powerhouse San Pedro. My name is Bob Andrade, and this is a Powerhouse podcast made just for you. The topics for this podcast were derived from our Sunday morning gatherings on November 13th, 2022. This is a recap or summary of the information we talked about on that Sunday morning, as well as some added insight that I included since then. If you enjoy these podcasts, please subscribe or comment below. If you would like to help support this ministry, the information for that is listed below in the description. In our daily walk with God, there are elements that when we are aware of them, we can access. It's not that we are not granted access to these elements prior to our awareness, but rather as we become aware of these elements, we then become aware of what we can access. In other words, until we know what we can access, can we access them? One of those elements is revelation. Webster's definition of revelation is an act or revealing or communicating divine truth, something that is revealed by God to humans, an act of revealing to view or making known, an enlightening or astonishing disclosure, a pleasant, often enlightening surprise. When God reveals something to me, I usually say something to the effect of, you know, it dawned on me the other day. If you remember what I said last week in the story I shared with you about not being able to find the important papers in the doctor's office, it wasn't until after multiple times of the nurse and receptionist looking for the paperwork that it dawned on me that God knew where the paperwork was. And so I asked him to show the nurse, and he did. When it dawned on me, this was not of my doing. This was revealed to me. By God. It was a revelation from God. This was also experienced with Simon in the Gospels when Jesus was asking them, who do they say I am? Matthew 16, verse 15, 16, and 17 says, but you, who do you say that I am? Jesus asked. Simon Peter spoke up and said, you are the anointed one, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, you are favored and privileged, Simon, son of Jonah, for you didn't discover this on your own but my Father in heaven has supernaturally revealed it to you. As for me, the thought of God knowing where the papers were and the idea of him letting the nurse know didn't even dawn on me until God revealed that to me. I had another revelation the other day. I was wondering, why do people listen to or not listen to praise and worship music? I asked this to myself first, and then I asked God. I asked myself, Why do I listen to praise and worship music? Is it because I'm a musician and I like music? Is it because I'm a worship leader and I'm interested in worship music? Is it because I enjoy the arrangements and the style of music that's written? The answer to all those questions was no. So then why do I listen to praise and worship and or Christian music? At the moment, I didn't have an answer. Until one day, it dawned on me. While well, listening to a local Christian radio station, a song came on that I was unfamiliar with. The song was entitled, The Same God. Now, here are some of the lyrics. I'm calling on the God of Jacob, whose love endures through generations. I know that you will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God of Moses, the one who opened up the ocean. I need you now to do the same thing for me. And then, as I heard the words, To the chorus, it dawned on me. The reason I listened to this kind of music was answered in the chorus of this song. God revealed to me why people listen and why I listen to praise and worship music in the chorus of this song. Here are the lyrics of the chorus. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. O rock, O rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness, on your faithfulness. The reason I listen to praise and worship music is because of the fact that I need God now. 
the music, the vocalist, the instrumentalist, the style of the song is all secondary to the fact that I need God. And this music reminds me through its lyrics who God is and how big he is and what I have in him and who I am in him. Throughout my day, everything else tends to push its way to the front burner of my life, which can cause me to magnify my problems bigger than my God. Praise, worship, and Christian lyrics remind me and help me fix my eyes on what I know to be true in him. And remembering this fuels my hope, hope in my day, hope in my situations, hope in my tomorrows. I need these kinds of lyrics to remind me of his greatness. This is what fuels my faith and my trust and my joy and being able to rest in him. This also happens when I read the word. I don't read the word or listen to godly based lyrics as a chore or something I should do. I read the word and listen to the declarations of who God is and what I have in him through music as it says in Philippians 4, 8. So keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real, honorable and admirable, beautiful and respectful, pure and holy, merciful and kind, and fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising him always. There's something about me that I have recently come to realize. You see, I enjoy listening to most all styles of music, but... I realize that I rarely ever pay attention to the lyrics. Even to the most familiar songs of my favorite groups and favorite singers. As a musician, my focus is usually on the music of a song. I listen to the arrangements of instrumentalists utilized in the writing of the song. I listen to the catchy melodies, the progression of chords, the harmonies, the fluctuation and texture of the notes sung by the vocalist or instrumentalist. I enjoy all music based on these reasons. I'm always amazed at Nicole when she sings the lyrics of my favorite songs. And I usually think, oh, that's what it says? But with praise and worship songs, it's the lyrics that catch my attention. First and foremost, go figure. So God revealed to me the answer to the question I had about why do people or why do I listen to praise and worship music? And God utilized a song of worship to reveal the answer to me. Revelation involves hearing and identifying the voice of God. As a project here at Powerhouse, we are fine-tuning this ability by practicing and intentionally asking God to speak to us through Scripture. This week, we are taking on the challenge of picking a chapter in the Bible, any chapter, and then reading it every day, the same chapter, and asking God to reveal what he wants to as we read it every day. And then we're writing it down. We write down what he reveals to us. One chapter, same chapter, every day, writing down what he reveals to us. Reading, asking, listening, and then writing it down. Another topic we talked about on Sunday morning was leadership. Let me ask you this. Are you a leader? A leader is one who conducts and guides others, as in a tour guide who leads a tour which guides others through sites, things, and places. A leader is also defined as one who directs others. A leader is also defined as one who has commanding authority and influence. Are you a leader? One of the reasons we may not see ourselves as leaders is because we may be looking in the wrong place. In this world, a leader may get his or her authority and influence from a title or a position, such as judge, mayor, officer, CEO, CFO. And they might get their authority or influence from a suffix or a prefix attached to their name, such as the honorable judge, such as doctor or sergeant. They might have suffixes attached to their name, such as a bachelor's degree, or a master's, or a PhD, or a doctorate, or an MBA, or even reverend. But a title or position really doesn't make a leader. It may only identify their accomplishments of study. But passing a test 
doesn't make one a leader. A leader leads people. A good leader may never have a title or even an official position. A good leader will lead people. A good leader has people that want to follow. There are store managers that have a leadership position and yet do not know how to lead people. There are heads of companies that do not know how to lead. And there are pastors of churches that may be good at teaching and or preaching, but not good at leading people. This happens more than you might realize. People have a tendency to automatically think that someone with money or a degree or a position or accomplishments can lead. I've had bosses and supervisors at companies that I have worked for that were not good leaders. Did you know that most people who yell or holler do so because they don't feel as though they have authority or control? A person who truly has authority and control knows they have authority. When someone does not feel as though they have authority or control of the situation, they often think that yelling will give it to them. When all it does is assure those around them that they lack authority. One of the main reasons that people yell is to try and get what they do not have in control of a situation or authority. So one who yells most likely has no authority. And so that's why they yell to think that they can get it in that way. You don't get authority by yelling. You don't get control by yelling. You either have authority or you don't. One who has authority knows that they do have it. And they know that they don't have to do something to get it because they already have it. For example, as we see in the Gospels, the one who has all authority, Jesus Christ, did not need to yell to get his authority because he knew what he had. All he needed to do was speak. And so he spoke to the storm. He spoke to the demons. He spoke to a tree. And he most likely spoke or might even have spoken loudly to Lazarus, who was probably far into the tomb and wouldn't have heard Jesus calling him if Jesus hadn't spoken loudly when he called his name. But Jesus didn't need to yell to get the authority. He most likely spoke loudly so his voice could be heard all the way to the back of the tomb where Lazarus was. I have made comments in our podcast where I refer to Powerhouse as being a gathering of leaders and that Powerhouse San Pedro is more of a leadership training center than a church. What does that mean? Well, first of all, what matters most is where we get our authority. We are not training people at Powerhouse to be leaders of industries or companies. Yet, on a Sunday morning, the room is filled with leaders. You see, we are not training people here to be law enforcement leaders or government leaders or leaders of organizations or companies or civic leaders or political leaders. Because our strength, influence, and power doesn't come from a university or a certificate or from something we've earned. Our strength, our influence, and power comes from another world, another realm. Our strength and our power comes from the spiritual realm. In other words, the spiritual realm has more power and authority than the physical world. What do I mean? Which is more real to you, the physical world or the spiritual world? Now, most of us would say the physical world, but I dare say it's the spiritual world. Why? Because the physical world came from the spiritual world. From the spiritual realm, God spoke the physical realm into existence. Some might say that the spiritual realm is more real than the physical realm. You see, both worlds are real, but one carries a more powerful influence and impact. And that is the spiritual world. And we, as believers and followers of Christ, are ambassadors and representatives of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We are ambassadors and representatives of the kingdom of heaven. Our authority comes from the one who holds all authority, and that's Jesus Christ himself. In Matthew 28, 18, it says, Then Jesus came close to them and said, All the authority of the universe has been given to me. Now 
Go in my authority and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to faithfully follow all that I have commanded you, and never forget that I am with you every day, even to the completion of this age. We have been given authority, not from a national or global government, but rather from the creator of all things. Not from civic leaders or a corporation or an institution or university. We are not leaders of this world. We are ambassadors and representatives of the kingdom of heaven. We are leaders of righteousness. The love and kindness and meekness and generosity and righteousness and hope that comes from God is unlike anything in this world system. We are not representatives of this world, but of another world. That's why Jesus said to the Samaritan woman, if you drink the water from this world, you will thirst again. But if you drink the water that I have from the kingdom of heaven, you will thirst no more. Why? Because the water from the kingdom of heaven is living water. And it quenches more than just dehydration of our bodies. It quenches the soul and the spirit. This is what Jesus was talking about when in conversation with the Samaritan woman. And in that same passage of scripture, while Jesus was talking to the Samaritan woman, the disciples were in town getting food and supplies. And when they returned, they asked Jesus if he was hungry. And Jesus answered, no. They then asked, has somebody given you some food? And that's when Jesus said, I have food that you know not of. And I don't think they understood that fully yet. You see, the food that Jesus was talking about was the interaction with the Father. And that only quenches a physical hunger, but a spiritual one as well. Our strength, our authority, our power comes from a heavenly realm that is greater than anything in this world. And we have access to the kingdom of God because of Jesus paying the price of our admission and entrance fee, if you will. The way we access the strength and power of the kingdom of heaven is not through physical accomplishments, but rather spiritual. This is why we access the kingdom of heaven through our trust, our faith, our hope, our rest, and our joy in the Lord. This is why it says in the scriptures that the joy of the Lord is our strength. You see, the currency of this world is money. The currency of the kingdom of God is faith. Jesus displayed this power and authority through accessing the spiritual realm, through interacting with the Father. This is why understanding our identity in Christ is so important. When we understand what we have and who we are in Christ, it becomes an access point from the heavenlies, from the Holy Spirit. Notice how when Jesus did the miraculous It wasn't based on a formula. This is why he healed people and did the miraculous in so many different ways. One time he touched them. Another time he spit and made mud and put it on their eyes. And other times he didn't do anything but yet just say a word and the centurion's daughter was healed. It's not the physical formula that impacts this world. But rather it's the power of God that is accessed through trust, faith, hope, rest. Enjoy. If you are a believer and follower of Jesus Christ, you have been given the greatest authority known to all mankind and beyond. You are a leader, a leader of hope, a leader of love, a leader of kindness, a leader of righteousness. How else will anybody in this world be able to see the characteristics of the Father but through you and me? What we are raising up here at Powerhouse are leaders that are learning how to access all the power of the universe in him. 